Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I'm Tina. Today it's my birthday. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I'm going to say I'm not 40 yet. So uh, <laughs> I've decided to do a birthday book recommendation video where I go through some well-known books that I think are worth the hype and also some lesser known ones perhaps. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're lesser known. They might be, they might not be. I don't know. I'm not on TikTok. I don't know what's trending. So um, I'm just going to basically recommend you a whole bunch of books in every single genre that I can think of. I'm very, I'm very sweaty. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> it's very humid in my house for some reason. So uh, apologies in advance if I start to like perspire. Anyway, so let's start with one of my favorite genres, which is sci-fi post-apocalyptic books. Obviously, I'm going to recommend The Road. If you have not read The Road, you should. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm going to try not to say absolutely fantastic about every book. I'm going to try to keep it to like maybe five times I say that. But no, this book is momentous. It's father and son story, which is normally not my jam. But, you know, it, the, the love the father has for his child, the things he does to protect him, the, the utter wasteland that McCarthy has created in his kind of like vague style is just so evocative. And the movie's really good too, if you want to check that out. No, I, I highly recommend this book. Um, I also recommend Wool. Uh, they just made a, a show out of it, which I thought was actually really good on Apple TV. But this book is really, really fun. I wasn't as super into books two and three of this trilogy, but this first book is awesome. It follows uh, this engineer. Uh, she's been called up to basically become the sheriff of this silo-like bunker. And <laughs> there's some control happening here. It's, it's really, really well done. It's really, it's big, but it's like a really fast read. It's, it's kind of more of a thriller than anything. It's, it's really good. Uh, now, I don't know how popular this book is, but I really love The Sea of Rust. It's about a robot apocalypse, uh, but after all the humans have all been dead. And you go through it being like, oh yeah, one of them is going to find a human at some point. No, no, that doesn't happen. This book is solely about robots. And there's a badass robot. She's amazing, like main character. And then there's also a uh, like sniper kind of heart of gold robot. I don't know. <laughs> it's so much fun. There's raider robots. It, it's a blast. It's a blast. Highly recommended. And then one that I really like is, oops, Hollow Kingdom. So this one features, it's a zombie apocalypse and the main characters are animals. Uh, it's told in the perspective of this crow who is basically the pet of a guy that turns into a zombie and it's about him trying to rescue other animals that have been trapped in houses and some more stuff happens. It's really funny, it's hilarious, and it's just so, if you love animals, you'll absolutely love it. It's so good. There's a dog in it that's like his best friend reminding me of my dog. Oh. Anyway, so good. So good. <laughs> okay, so moving on to sci-fi space opera. I promise I'm not doing every single subgenre of science fiction, just these two and then another kind of small random stack. So this is space opera and it is, so I've got The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. This one is a lot of fun. It's like a found family story of this kind of group of workers who are going to make create a wormhole passageway and kind of how they get there and the things that happen on the way. It's very character driven. There's a lot of alien human romance in it, which I like, uh, but it's like very, very found family fun. It's not exactly cozy, but it's also not like a thriller. If you want a thriller, Obviously, Leviathan Wakes, um, The Expanse series, very, very good, a lot of fun. Not super fond of how the one woman character was depicted in this book, but it gets better kind of as the series progresses. Uh, yeah, no, this is just a blast. There's just so much in it. There's a detective story. There's a kind of a zombie thing. There's kind of, there's action. It's, it's really, really good. Uh, let's see here. And a classic kind of. Hyperion. Hyperion is worth the hype. It's fascinating. It's interesting. It kind of combines like five or six styles of sci-fi or subgenres of sci-fi into one book. And it's kind of like little vignettes of like these characters as they're traveling together. Like you get like an epic backstory on each of them. <laughs> a mega info dump. So much so that it feels like a short story of each one. And it all ties together. And then the second one, um, yeah, just it's good. It's really good. <laughs> Uh, for ones that you might not have heard about, you probably heard about this one because I reviewed uh, the third one the other day, but this is Ten Low. It's a sci-fi western. It's kind of a space opera in that it deals with, you know, space conflicts and things like that. Uh, but it's about this medic. She used to be in the army. She's kind of living on this desert moon that is very western feeling, kind of firefly feeling in the sense that it's kind of run down. There's technology, but it's like limited, things like that. And she stumbles across this girl who's been in a spaceship cross, but the girl is actually like a augmented super soldier general from the army. And so she has to decide whether to save her or not. And it's really fun. The dynamics between the two characters is great. There are these 
kind of raider ladies called the gals like g apostrophe h a l s and they're so fun i just love this book it's so good chilling effect is really fun if you want a more diverse sci-fi uh we have a latina main character who's a who's a space captain and she's got this really fun crew she's got an alien boyfriend uh obviously a draw for me and uh it's just got a lot of fun stuff in it like this is kind of one of those like episodic kind of sci-fi novels that kind of brings in a lot of pop culture references but still has its own world building there's a, it's a trilogy that's complete and i really like it also the covers are really fun the covers are gorgeous <laughs> The audiobook's really good on that, too. And we have The Stars Are Legion by Cameron Hurley. I'm not sure how popular this one is. This book is, of all of them, I'd say it's the weirdest. It's very strange. It's hard to kind of explain what it's about. Uh, decaying world ships, they're traveling. Um, there's a person that wakes up with no memory. She thinks she's on the wrong ship. All this stuff. There's a lot of interesting kind of weird stuff. A lot of body horror in this. Uh, really, really good. So now I have some other sci-fi so if you have not read annihilation i highly recommend it i absolutely loved it i there's a lighthouse in it i love lighthouses there's kind of a it's a squad of like four women all in stem and they go into this weird area where all this strange stuff is happening uh there was a movie made out of it with natalie portman i thought the movie was a good adaptation but the book is uh, a little different and then the second two books are equally good it's it's one of those books that you're not really sure what it's about but it's like really interesting and fascinating um, another one you probably heard of is Battle Royale. So this is set in a dystopian Japan where uh, randomly a class of students is selected to go to this island where they have to fight to the death. And there has and the one and there's one person standing. It's meant to be kind of like a social control thing. It's fascinating. The characters are so well done. You get to see each character's kind of perspective and the battles they have and the fights they have. The people that don't want to fight, the ones that do. It's and then there's a whole bunch about class stuff and elite. It's really, really good. It's a beast, but you fly through it and highly recommend it. The movie uh, from like the 80s or 90s does a good job, but this book is just fantastic. I said fantastic again. I've probably said it more times I didn't even notice. Ancillary Justice. This is a great one. This probably should have been in space opera, but this one is hard to describe too. Oh, I'm trying to remember. I read this one like 12 years ago, but basically it's like soldiers and stuff, but it's got some interesting things in it that play with gender and uh, things like that. And it's also just like really exciting and really fun. Ones you might not have heard what, heard of. Okay, so here's another kind of sci-fi Western one. Um, a little bit, so it's about kind of Earth is kind of just destroyed, kind of getting destroyed. And this family is taken to this other planet where there's an alien species already there. And so it's, it's very much has to do with colonialism. It has to do with this girl that uh, is kind of the intermediary between the two species because she learns to speak their language it's really interesting because it came out a long time ago like a long time ago meaning like in the early 2000s and that's the last 1998 so really when kind of the conversations about that stuff really started picking up and so it's fascinating in that regard and I, I really liked it in fact I read it when it first came out probably maybe not 1998 maybe like 2004 or something like that so it's been like 20 years since I read this book so I should read it again and it's, it's been on my favorite shelf for that long even though I've only read it once so I do recommend this one Watch I read it now and I'm like, oh god, it's so problematic, but we'll see. Maybe I'll maybe I'll reread it. <laughs> Another one that came out a few years ago is Red Noise. This one is awesome. It's like Seven Samurai in space. There's this woman. She's a I can't remember who she is. She's like a she's some kind of a contractor. She shows up at the space station to refuel her ship and she gets involved in protecting the people that live there from these mob gangs that are like taking over and yes she has a samurai sword and yes there's a chainsaw in it and yes it's it's amazing if you love seven seven if you love seven samurai you will totally totally like this it's so fun and lastly i've talked about this book a million times but it's space captain smith if you like sci-fi comedy if you like british humor uh and if you like pop culture references you will love this series i have all six of them i just these books are so much fun. They're just a blast. So I do highly recommend these uh, if you have a chance to find them because they're not very easy to find. <laughs> okay, moving away from other genres, we're moving into fantasy now. First, we've got just straight up fantasy and that would be The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. If you have not read this book, you are doing yourself a disservice. This series is absolutely amazing. It blew my mind. It made me cry a billion times in the third season It or in the third book. It has to do with basically a mother and her children and a fabulous, intricate, so fascinating 
magic system. The magic system in this is so freaking cool. And I just, I just loved it. And her writing style is just, I, I flew through this. It's so good. I want to reread it. <laughs> Another kind of typical fantasy that I really like, the third one just came out this year, it is The Justice of Kings. Of course, I'm going to talk about this. If you like political sci-fi, if you like uh, sci-fi, fantasy if you like fantasy with kind of a detective in it <laughs> if you like fantasy that has a whole bunch of kind of subgenres kind of meshed together and a very kind of interesting world then you will like this i i thought it was really good it's what's interesting is the main it's told from the perspective of this woman who is like the scribe or kind of like apprentice to this chief justice who is hot and also a uh a, like a wizard <laughs> they never call them wizards but they're wizards uh very fun uh, City of Saints and Mad Men. Kind of getting on the weirder side here, but most people have heard of this one. Highly recommend it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, it's about this city and this just weird ass city and this weird ass shit that happens in this weird ass city. And it is really, really intricate. It's huge. But it's each one's like short little, almost little short stories that are kind of interconnected because they all take place in the city and it has this mushroom fungal kingdom underneath the city and all. Oh, it's so, it's so, it's so good. <laughs> Lastly, for ones you've probably heard of, Gotta have Malazan. Malazan's fantastic. It's kind of literary in that it's very, it's not, it does not hold your hand whatsoever. It throws you in and kind of assumes that you know what's going on. And because I read the book, I read, I, you can watch my reread of it from like 20 years ago, just like the last time I read this when I was in my early 20s. I reread it last year and it was, I, I loved it just as much. In fact, I loved it more because I actually knew what was going on in certain spots. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, this series is really, really good. And, uh, there's a reason why it has a huge following. And I, I have this sweet original copy. It's worth like 150 bucks. Uh, and so ones that you might not have heard of. I reviewed this one last year. <laughs> a Gallery for the Barbarian. This book is wild. It's about this undead painter who follows around this barbarian who is his muse and they just get into some wacky adventures together. It's very much a sword and sorcery fantasy. It's self-published. does not read like it's self-published in terms of kind of having typos and stuff. It's, it's a very well put together book. Uh, it's Canadian and uh, yeah I, I loved it. I, I The cover is what drew me in and um, yeah no I ended up buying it after reading it on ebook because I loved it so much. Lastly, for fantasy, we've got Bone Shaker. This book is really cool. It's about this woman. She's a mother, and her teenage son slips through the barricade into this kind of very steampunky, post-apocalyptic, dangerous area of, I think it's like Seattle. Um, yeah, I, can't, I, I read this one so long ago, but I still think about it because the world building is so cool. There's like fog everywhere, and like it's really really fun the main character is an absolute badass uh yeah so definitely recommend this one i think it's a series like i think there's more to it i've only read the first one though but uh it's really cool it's kind of one of the ones that is like kind of a sci-fi fantasy on to one more genre of subgenre of fantasy and that is dark fantasy so obviously for dark fantasy gideon the ninth i think this book is absolutely hilarious it's fun it's entertaining you're not sure where it's going the second book harrow the ninth i actually like more but um Gideon is she's a blast she's just so funny <laughs> so if you've heard of this and haven't are not sure what it is it's um lesbian necromancers in space and it's kind of these they are young people so if you're an old person like me don't be afraid <laughs> I still really enjoyed it they're basically from um the upper echelons of their like planets essentially and they have to like fight oh my god it's so hard to explain because it's it, it's too much too much depth it's very it's a very in-depth story but it's also very fast and funny and it's really good uh for two two uh dark fantasies that you probably haven't read there is along the razor's edge which is self-published i've talked about this one a few times i reviewed the last the second or third one last year um but this one's great it's about this teenage girl she's in a prison pit because she's a dangerous wizard and she is angry and she is vengeful and she kicks a whole lot of ass uh there is no sexual like sexual assault in this book i was kind of worried about that given she's in a prison pit with a bunch of dudes who are all criminals that does not happen don't worry about that uh it's it's a lot of fun and there is also up to the throne by T.A. Frost, which is funny because it's actually the same guy that wrote Space Captain Smith, but this is a very serious kind of Italian Renaissance fantasy about this woman who is an assassin trying to 
I can't remember what the deal is with her actually, but I really, I read this book a couple years ago, but I thought it was really, really well done and I really loved the characters and the setting was really cool because there's also like fey creatures involved but only like slightly and I know there's more to this to the, I know there's a second book I gotta get to it but definitely recommend that one and um the jealousy of Jalus I really loved the jealousy of Jalus this one was about these it's like a demon possession story <laughs> there's these this other realm and these demons are trying to get out of it and these people are in it, it, one of the demons comes out it's it's really really fun and the second book in it i actually liked even more than the first one uh yeah so that's fantasy for you horror now i used to read so much horror when i was younger like when i was a teenager when i was in my early 20s i read a ton of it i got all from the library so i don't really have a lot of it to show and i'm just kind of getting back into it right now because there was like this time period where i didn't really read horror i don't know why so um but my favorite horror book of all time is the shining i recently went to the shining hotel <laughs> at least the one that inspired um Stephen King to write this, the one that the miniseries in the 90s was filmed at, not the uh, not the Stanley Kubrick version. I'm one of those weird people that absolutely loves both the book and the Stanley Kubrick version. So uh, yeah, I love that movie. It's so good. Uh, yeah, so in terms of horror though, I recommend, oh actually another one that you might have heard of is The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. She is very much a uh, very popular reader um, right now <laughs> in horror and The Hollow Places is very, very cool. It's not super scary. It's more kind of it's not a thriller though. It is a horror. It's just not like a jump out of your pants horror. Um, but it's really fascinating kind of what happens in it. It's like there's this other realm and the stuff that's in that other realm is is very interesting. There's a character, if you've read this, called Martin Sturdivant and my husband and I <laughs> were always referencing him <laughs> to when random uh, <laughs> things like with entrails uh, show up in our daily lives. Not like real ones, you know, like, you know drop some spaghetti on the floor and I'll be like, look, Rob, it's part of Martin Sturdivant. He'll be like, get out of here. Anyway, uh, another book I recommend is Alice. I actually did review this one recently, like early last year, but in terms of horror, it really blew me away. It's a Alice in Wonderland kind of spinoff where she's been in a mental institution and she and the Mad Hatter escape and uh, they go through this really really messed up world where all the characters are there in different forms it is not for the faint of heart but if you like horror that pushes the boundaries uh this one's good there is a reference to um sexual assault but it's not it's not graphic this one is one that came out i think a couple years ago the hollows by daniel church it is a folk horror about a town that is besieged by basically by monsters but also this other kind of rough side of the tracks family and so it's a really interesting kind of the dynamic because you have the townspeople and you have those people and then you have what's happening to those people it's one of those like isolated town under attack stories and uh it's set in the winter which is which is cool i always like winter stories so next we have victorian novels or at least set in the 1800s so obviously obviously you got p and p p and p is the best it's one of the best books in my opinion ever written i absolutely love pride and prejudice there's a reason it's popular if you have not taken the pleasure of reading this book you totally should it is extremely approachable it's extremely relatable it's extremely it's just everything about it just is still applicable in this day and age and it's just and a love story <laughs> yeah there's a reason why mr darcy is like on everyone's uh, to tap list um also you know emma emma's a good one if you want another jane austen I'm not going to go into these too deeply. Jane Eyre is one most people have heard of. Definitely, definitely worth reading. Same thing. It's got all, it's very easy to read in this day and age. It's, even though, you know, it's obviously a the language is a bit archaic. It's not, it's not too bad. Like I read this book when I was like 13 and I understood it. So I think you guys can handle it. Uh, no, it's really good. This copy is terrible though. <laughs> Little Women is fantastic. It's one of my favorite books. It's so good. Um, if you have seen the Gerda Gerwig version or the 90s version with Winona Ryder in it, um, definitely read the book. It is very similar. It's, it, those movies take almost directly from the book, but it's just, it's so like wholesome and sweet and it's about sisters and like if you want something that's kind of like gonna make you cry because obviously you know spoiler alert a character dies but cry in the way that you're like i love my family like it's it's definitely it'll definitely do that to you 
Now, three books you might not have read if you've read a few classics, not classics, uh, like 1800 novels. Thomas Hardy is my boy. I love Thomas Hardy. He's an ally for women. <laughs> All of his female main characters have great depth and most of his books are kind of arguing about how life was shit for women in the 1800s and I like that about him. Far From the Madding Crowd is about a, um, a dude and a woman and they both just want to live outside in the countryside and it's about kind of the the struggles that uh, come about when you try to do that um, but also like there's the you know the interpersonal problems with the people in the town and stuff and the love story is really good in this one too. If you want a story similar to Pride and Prejudice in that it's like an enemies to lovers romance, North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell is fantastic. Ah, I did it again. It is uh, is wonderful. It is about this woman from the north of England going to the south, which at the time was like an industrial zone. So you had a lot of kind of rough and ready dudes there. And so she and the the factory owner kind of butt heads uh, at, at times. It's, it's got a bit of political tinge to it it's very serious but the love story in it is very nice and uh the character development is fantastic in it too elizabeth gaskell is really really good like to me she's like i like her more than george Eliot. um in terms of like kind of like second or third favorite of the victorian writers or regency or whatever <laughs> that era and the women in white is really good by wilkie collins this one is a ghost story kind of it's more of a mystery thriller uh yes a mystery thriller and it's about a um a woman in white. No, it's about um, a guy that goes to stay at this mansion and there's two sisters there and there's just, it's, it's, there's a lot for me to describe about this. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a gothic horror as well. It's, it's, it's cool. It's very cool. Next we have classics. So if you have not read Proust, try it. <laughs> I have not finished it. I have read four volumes out of the six. I just really, really, really hate the narrator in book five. And I'm having, I'm having some difficulty, you know, caring about him. So I kind of took a break. But the first book and the second, actually, I think the second book, uh, like usual, the second book tends to be my favorite of everything. But no, if you haven't read Proust, give it a shot. It's not that long. And I mean, yeah, it is a lot of him describing mundane stuff. But it's, it's just, it's such a different way of reading. It's a different way of kind of thinking about what literature should do that I just think that it's it's kind of a mind expanding experience because it's a lot different than the books we read today. The Sound and the Fury, I, ooh, ooh, the, the name of my channel, which obviously comes from Macbeth, but also this book is named that as well. But um, it's about this family that is run down in the antebellum south and uh, there's some, they're a weird family. And it's got four different perspectives. It's a bit cryptic to read, kind of like his typical stuff. But uh, it's not this long. It's actually about half. This is like the critical edition. So it's got a bunch of like essays in it. Uh, but no, it's pretty short. Uh, an easier one of Faulkner's, if you wanted to read Faulkner, was As I Lay Dying, which is about a woman's body being carted to her burial place by her family. And she's kind of narrating the story. It's interesting. If you want to read Hemingway, I know a lot of people don't like Hemingway. I personally don't like Hemingway. Uh, <laughs> a Farewell to Arms. I cried so much at the end of this book. <laughs> people think Hemingway is all like, oh, I'm a manly man, blah, blah, blah. But his stories are actually about a lot of emotion. And they're about, you know, this book's set in World War I. It's about a man basically having his his soul ripped out of his body and then having it ripped out again when something else happens to him. And it's just, it's a tragedy. And it's a, it's a very well done book if you really want to jump into a Hemingway. I like this one better than um, For Whom the Bell Tolls. Uh, yeah. Watership Down. <laughs> this book is a classic to me. My dad used to read this book to me and I love it. If you want to read something that's obviously an allegory, but it deals with cute little bunnies that tear each other to shreds, then you should totally read this book. It, it's really good. I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. It's about bunnies trying to find a new home. It's obviously about deeper themes than that, but that's kind of like the, that's what I thought it was about when I was 12. The Master and Margarita. <laughs> this book is so wild. This book is definitely worth reading if you want to experience some interesting Russian literature. Oh, it's about the devil and a woman. And there's cats in it. There's a lot of stuff in this book. It's just, it's, I'm not going to tell you anything else about it. You should totally read it. It's funny too. It's really funny. I got one more here. Rebecca, you can't see the cover, I don't know, I'm holding this up. But Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, uh, you've probably heard of du Maurier. She is not a brand of cigarettes. She is an amazing writer. And she, Rebecca is like her, 
her one she's known most for but I've read five or six of her other books and she's just got this like beautiful writing style and the endings she's got some great twists to her books that you're just like what <laughs> but no Rebecca is there's a reason why people love Rebecca it's it's not a love story it's something else <laughs> If you want a love story about a woman and a ghost, <laughs> there's Trist by Elizabeth Thane. Again, I'm showing you a book with no cover, but uh, no, this book is about a girl and she moves into a house with her family and there's a soldier who used to live there and he dies in, the, in World War One, I, I guess. And his ghost come back, comes back to his house and then the, she and the ghost fall in love. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very sweet. <laughs> and I cried. I cry all the time though. It's not, it's not really saying much when I say that I cried. I'm gonna get into some historical fiction now. Wow, this is a long video. Uh, so if you have, if you've heard of The Book Thief, it is good. It's good. I wouldn't say it's the best book ever. I thought it was interesting because Death is one of the narrators. <laughs> uh, World War II book. Um, it's, it's honestly, it's a fast read because it's very engaging. People say it's kind of like YA. It's not really YA. It's kind of like in between that. Um, no, it's, it's good. It's, I liked it. This book I absolutely love, The Remains of the Day. Uh, by Isher Girl, and this book is fantastic. It's about a servant who um, basically watches and tries to not care about his, um, the owner of the house slowly descending into Nazism. It's a very interesting book. It deals with like four or five, uh, three or four decades in British history. It deals with like the kind of fall of like the manor houses and things like that being bought out by like American owners, things like that. And then there's also a very interesting love story between a guy that is clearly, um, uh, he has, he has, he's on the spectrum for sure. And, uh, yeah. And his struggles with that, not knowing that and no one else knowing anything about it at the time. It's really, really well done. Anything by Sarah Waters is fantastic. Fingersmith is my favorite. It is a lesbian story about a girl who's a thief and another girl in a manor house. And uh, they kind of have to like, the one's playing the other and then they're, they, it's just a lot of intrigue. It, it very much feels like a Dickens story. So if you like Charles Dickens, you would like this. And if you don't like Charles Dickens, you should still read this because it's really good. And one more. This is one you probably haven't heard of. This is The Eight Pointed Cross by Martez Fennec. She is Canadian. Disclaimer, she's my friend. <laughs> but this book is amazing. It is about the Siege of Malta. So this is book one in her trilogy. It's all completed. And there's an audiobook of it as well. And it follows this man and his two kids. And it covers about three or four decades of their life living on Malta during the, um, the whole buildup between... Uh, the Ottoman Empire and the Knights of St. John and kind of how they're stuck in the middle of it. There's also uh, about about a third of the story is set in Istanbul with um, a young man who has a very abusive father and stepbrother and kind of like his life there and kind of how their lives are actually connected. It's it's very, very well done. Um, there's lots of cool stuff in it, uh, lots of battles, lots of fighting, but also like a great kind of family story too. Um, so totally recommend this. Let's jump into classic sci-fi. So obviously Neuromancer, if you have not read Neuromancer, is the ultimate cyberpunk book. It is exciting. I heard they're just, they're making a movie or a show about it. And I'm very curious how they're going to do that because a lot of it's set in kind of like a cyber world. So I'm very excited about the, the show to see if it'll, <laughs> it'll be good. I can't remember who's producing it. If it's Apple, then I have good hopes for it. They make good stuff. Dalgren by Samuel Delaney. Anything by Samuel Delaney is amazing. Noble, Babel 17, um, The Fall of the Towers. I really like that one. And this one is about a city, a very strange city. It's long. There's a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of scenes in it that I don't know if you need them, but it's part of the experience to kind of have to like labor your way through it. Uh, there's a, it's a very <laughs> disturbing scene with an elevator. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very, it's a very good book. Also, Ender's Game. I mean, if you want to read a, a, a space opera, that's really good and engaging. Ender's Game is, is fantastic. It's probably the first sci-fi that I ever read. My dad gave it to me, obviously. Uh, there's The Forever War, which is amazing. It is a kind of time travel book in a way it's not time travel it's about these soldiers that are sent to different planets but then with time dilation by the time they get back to earth you know after their missions it's been like a hundred years has passed and so it's just about the soldiers in this war it's kind of like starship troopers like the movie not the Heinlein book um in that you really care about the characters and the war they're fighting feels very you know it's not really a just war <laughs> 
I've got four recommendations for you for Plastic Sci-Fi. Um, Jade Darcy and the Affair of Honor. Good luck finding this one. But uh, it's about a woman bounty hunter um, coming into her own, realizing who she is, and making a female friend. Female friendship. Yay. <laughs> We All Died at Breakaway Station. I reviewed this one last year. I was on the hunt for this book for quite a long time at used bookstores. I finally found it. It fell apart when I was reading it. That's okay. This book is wild. The aliens in this book are messed up. Uh, yeah, this this book is mind-blowing, to be honest. Star Rigger. If you want something funny, Star Rigger is a blast. It's about a space transport truck driver and there is it's a trilogy. It has an amazing selection of alien characters. It has some pretty funny other characters as well. It's it's just fun. It's fun. <laughs> I mean it's a spaceship. It's a space truck. It's not meant to be serious. And Armor. This book is another kind of military sci-fi book, but it's it's just it has a lot of interesting depth and world building to it and the armor is a big part of the story. It's uh, I'm not going to kind of describe it too much but if you can find this one definitely check it out. All right we have contemporary fiction next so uh, if you've heard of The Hours it was a movie I think it won some some oh this also won the Pulitzer Prize <laughs> I didn't realize that and it also won uh, I know I have the movie version cover Ugh, gross I think it won it won Oscars or something right anyway the um but yeah, Pulitzer Prize winner, definitely worth it. I can't believe a man wrote this book, to be honest, because it's all about kind of women and their struggles. But it's really good. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, my sister told me a funny story. They were studying the book in university, and I guess no one had caught up on the reading, and so the professor, like, spoiled the book, like a huge twist in the book, and everyone was like, no! And she was like, well, you should have read it on time! <laughs> uh, there's a reason you've heard of Donna Tartt, <laughs> The Goldfinch, and any of her books. I also have uh, The Secret History, and I've read one of her other ones. She's amazing. She's one of those deeply intelligent people. And it's funny because you read this whole book and you don't like the characters. You don't like them. But there's something so compelling about reading the book. And when you get to the end, you're just like, oh, that's what it's about. <laughs> it's a beast. But it's a beast that when you, it's a satisfying beast. And it also won the Pulitzer Prize. I don't know how popular this one is. A.S. By it, Possession. Uh, this book came out, I think, in the 90s. And it's interesting because it's a story of um, these researchers who are researching the lives of these Victorian writers. And it's kind of like there's poems and journals and they have a love story that's growing as they're researching the other love story. But it's, it's, it's a, she's a beautiful writer. The writing is just lovely in this. And uh, it definitely recommend it. It's, it's, I don't know if this one won any awards. <laughs> For other contemporary novels, I have some you might not have heard of. You probably have not heard of Immortal North unless you watch my channel. <laughs> this is a Canadian book about a man who lives in, like, off-grid up in, I think it's in BC, and he lives completely in a cabin by himself with his son. They live completely off the land. They go into town, like, maybe twice a year to get, like, school books for the kid and things like that. Uh, yeah, and it's all about their life, and a tragedy happens. A tragedy that made me cry so hard. And then there's a second book that deals with grief and getting over it and I cried so hard again this book is amazing if you can get a hold of this book I'm sure it's on Amazon it's self-published uh which again blows my mind because it's so well done it uh it's so good it deserves to be like on on the shelves and chapters <laughs> which is our Barnes and Noble here in Canada Another one, this one's kind of quirky. This is Observatory Mansions. This book came out in the, I think the late 90s. I read it in the late 90s. I read it like five times in my youth. I have not read it since I was probably about 22. Um, but uh, <laughs> this is a book about a bunch of weirdos that live in this um, apartment building. And it's, if you like kind of quirky character stories, this is definitely a book for you to check out. And then there is a Confederacy of Dunces. You've probably heard of this. Uh, the interesting thing about this is that the author committed suicide and his mother post um published the book after his death and it is a very interesting story about this odd man and his kind of experiences living in the city and kind of wandering around he makes very caustic <laughs> rude comments about a lot of the people he meets it's quite funny it's also got a bit of tragedy to it it's, it's very well done if you should check it out i think it won it also won the pulitzer prize all the pulitzer prize winners yeah Got a couple more categories for you before my, my throat gives out here. Um, we've got Thriller. Now, I don't read a lot of thrillers. I hated Gone Girl. I hated The Girl on the Train. I thought Dark Matter was stupid. The Da Vinci Code for me is extremely simplistic. I thought it was, you know, it was a quick read, but it was very kind of like, I don't know. Uh, 
Um, and I'm too scared to read The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. But I did like, like Mystic River, which is a movie as well, I think. It's probably one of those award-winning movies. I thought that was really well done if you want a thriller. Uh, I also really liked this one, which is like a psychological thriller called The Inside Out Man, about this man, and I can't remember what he does. Oh yeah, so he goes, he's a jazz pianist, he gets invited to this um, mansion, and then a bunch of weird stuff happens. He makes a deal with the man that lives there, and that's a very strange deal, and it's, a, it's an interesting book. And lastly, you probably haven't heard of this one, but it's um, called If I Lose Her by Brand Somerville. It's a Canadian book. It just came out in March, and it's about this woman who just had a baby. She's suffering a bit from postpartum, and strange things start happening around her house, and people keep gaslighting her, and she's not sure what's real and what's going on, and she's she's obsessed that someone is after her kid, and she's not sure why or who it is. And it's a very, very good mystery, and uh, I highly recommend it. It's a kind of a thriller mystery. It's nothing too kind of graphic in it or anything, but it's really good. Um, yeah. I have one last stack for you here, and this is Cerebral Books, books that kind of are intended to blow your mind, kind of mess with your head a bit. The one you've probably all heard of is House of Leaves. I'm going to say it. It's fantastic. <laughs> I read this book probably, as usual, 20 years ago. Let me dig it through my shelf. That was like blowing off all the dust. Um, and I want to reread it. It's just, it's a, it's a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> it's also heavy and I'm also kind of one of those people that's like what if I read it and don't like it as much like what if it's not as good as when I first read it um no I uh I, I think it'll still be good people still talk about this book on the internet and yeah it's definitely worth it it's cool because you should get the color version because it's got like all these words are different colors and stuff it's 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 really cool it's one of those books I like don't lend to people um, this one, actually, I didn't really like it that much, but the concept is wild. It's called The Box Man. It's about a man that wears a cardboard box on his head and he walks around. Um, <laughs> it's about more than that, but it's weird. If you like weird stuff, I, I think you probably should check this one out. Uh, this one's one of those ones that you probably read in, like, literature class. Um, Wittgenstein's Mistress. This is a very, very wild book. It's a woman who's convinced she's the last woman on Earth. And basically, she's got this, like, really weird, like, narrator, narrative voice point of view. And it's really, really cool. It's kind of an interesting story. Um, you know, it's a very interesting story. It's just weird. Um, the Sinking of Odredek Stadium. <laughs> it's like, I can't even tell you what this one's about. It's a, there's a lot of, like, letters between a husband and wife. But uh, the wife is just kind of not engaged. But I think it's because she can't really... So she can't really read English and so she's replying and it's, it's hard to understand what she's saying and then the husband tells these like long rambling ass stories and then in the end it's just you're just like what's going on it's very interesting um the unicorn by Iris Murdoch I love this book because it is set in like the north 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 of Scotland it's set on the cliffs it deals with a weird rambling rundown house it deals with a weird man and this woman that's kind of intrigued by him and it's a uh, it's very interesting <laughs> um I mentioned this before on my channel old rendering plant it is <laughs> about a man who goes to an abandoned factory a bunch of times and it, but it's all like metaphors um I'm just laughing because I gave this book to my brother-in-law and he gave it back to me and was like this book sucks so bad I'm like no it doesn't it's so good he's like no it sucks so we had a big argument about whether or not it sucked I think it's amazing he thinks it sucks so if you can read it and let me know it's very short <laughs> I'll be appreciated lastly um the minotaur takes a cigarette break for my uh, monster fucker friends out here. Um, yeah, this book deals with a minotaur in the south and he is a chef. <laughs> it's funny because he has to like serve people beef. It's weird. Um, and then there's a waitress that he has the hots for and she has the hots for him. And it's a story about loneliness and acceptance and uh, it's really good. And don't be scared of that part. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be scared of it. Give it a try. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's really, really a fascinating book. Fascinating. I said it again. 
Now, because it's my birthday, I'm going to do something I don't normally do, and that's talk about and hype my own writing. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about What Branches Grow, which is my post-apocalyptic book. It was a semi-finalist in the first self-published science fiction competition. It was a top five finalist in the Kindle Book Awards for 2020. Um, it's, it's, if you like Fallout, if you just watched the Fallout show and you liked that, you'll like this. Um, there's a lot of nods to Fallout in it because I'm obsessed with the games. Uh, <laughs> but it's not just like a fan fiction of that. It's, it, I create created my own, you know, my own world building in it. And the characters were a lot of fun. There's a pug dog named Mort. He does not die. Don't worry. There's a millennial who, you know, I wrote it when I was 25. And so um, he's 65 in the book. And so it's like a millennial in his 60s and how he acts. And he, so he has a lot of pop culture references that the younger people in the book don't understand. It's it's a love story in it. There's a lot of action in it. There's a bunch of grenades in it. There's a fight to the death in it. Uh, there's a cool sniper rifle in it. There's a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, I think you should check it out. <laughs> also, if you like, so if you like the weirder things that I say on this channel, if you think that I'm funny, um, some people think I'm funny, some people don't, that's fine. Uh, you should check out uh, Escaping First Contact, <laughs> this book. <laughs> Uh, I'm laughing because I had so much fun when I wrote it. I had such a blast. The characters, I just let them do whatever they wanted to do. I let them say whatever they wanted to say. Uh, it's about a group of, I think it's eight, seven or eight people. Maybe it's six. I don't know. Eight. <laughs> eight aliens. They travel to this apparently abandoned spaceship that no one has ever heard of. Uh, it's not from any of their species. And so they're sent to investigate. Uh, it's a trap. It's a trap. Uh, and what's inside the spaceship? You'll have to read it to find out. There's a lot of, there's a kind of references to zombies. It's kind of a, kind of a military sci-fi because a lot of them are fighters. There is a, uh, alien human romance in it. Um, in my opinion, there are three books in the trilogy. I, in my opinion, it's one solid book. I'm tempted to just re-release it as like a solid book and then submit it again to SPSPC. Because <laughs> honestly, the second book has the most important stuff in it. The second book is my favorite of the trilogy, even though, you know, there's obviously a favorite scenes in all of them. But the second book, I'd say, is probably not the strongest, but it's the one that I just kind of like the most. Uh, yeah, so I also think my cover art is beautiful. Uh, John Stubbington, if you need, if you're a self-published writer and you need a cover, he did a great job. Um, yeah, so those are my birthday book recommendations. I did not expect this to be a 40 minute video or whatever it is by the time I edit stuff out. <laughs> but I hope you enjoy that and I hope there are some good recommendations here and I probably forgot a whole bunch. I mean, I have, I don't know, 1500 books here. <laughs> yeah, this is only half my shelves. Someday I will do a library tour, but as I said earlier, did I say earlier? I don't know, um, not today. <laughs> Thank you.